And today, I suppose, I have a little bit of pride on watching chefs on TV. And the reason for that, many of them have worked for me. So if you look at some of the big names at the moment, Tom Kerridge. The pan around. If you shake the pan around, it'll get very cold very quickly and it'll boil. So let's just do this. Very quick and easy to make. And now the cheese. Very sad news today, guys, as the announcement that television celebrity chef Gary Rhodes has died age 59, as confirmed by his family. A statement from the family said that Rhodes' family are deeply saddened to announce the passing of beloved husband, father and brother, Gary Rhodes, OBE. Gary passed away last evening, Tuesday the 26th of November, at the age of 59, with his beloved wife, Jenny by his side. The family would like to thank everyone for their support and ask for privacy during this time. There was also a statement from the hotel where he worked in Dubai which said the team at Grosvenor House Dubai and the Royal Meridian Beach Resort and Spa are devastated to hear of the tragic passing of Chef Gary Rhodes OBE. Not only has the industry lost a true culinary legend but we have also lost an inspirational human being and a very dear friend. No words can express our sadness at Gary's death or our gratitude for the opportunity to work with him. Our thoughts and prayers are with the Rhodes family. Of course, Gary Rhodes was known for his distinctive spiking hairstyle in frontage shows such as MasterChef and Hell's Kitchen. In 2006, he competed in BBC's Great British Menu. Gary Rhodes was born in South London in 1960 and when, then his family went on to move to Gillingham and Kent and he went to Catering College in Thanet which is where he met his wife Jenny. He then moved to Dubai in 2011 and his death has come as a real shock I think to everybody. You know, my first Michelin star in 1986 for British food. And I was reintroducing, you know, sort of faggots in onion gravy and braised oxtails and mashed potato and got a Michelin star for it. You know, I was trying to make a statement. I wanted to be one of the first chefs to really say, look, we've got some of the finest ingredients in the world. You know, people, everybody wants to buy Scottish salmon. Everybody wants to buy longestines. We get them, these were flown in from Scotland. We're using here at the moment. Um, if you want scallops, you want to get those from the West Country, just off Cornwall. Uh, we've got the finest strawberries, raspberries, fruits, uh, those summer fruits all come from the UK. The best asparagus in the world is Britain. Again, Scottish beef, English beef, Welsh lamb, Welsh leek. It goes on and goes on. Kentish apples. And I just felt, if we've got the foods that are grown here, whatever happened to our repertoire of dishes to go with it, if you look at the history of British cuisine, you'll find there was a very huge Indian influence and those spices were starting to be introduced into um, British cuisine. Um, so yeah, there are some absolutely fantastic stories. Look at Mrs. Beaton, Mrs. Beaton, you know, her, her cookery books. I wanted to take ideas of, of old but give them a new introduction. And it's about having the right quality ingredients. It's about actually trying to put together and blend those um, strength of taste, those strength of textures. Um, and it's about a different depth of, of flavour. All we're using though is British ingredients, however, so we're doing the white tomato soup. Um, but they are bright red, they are juicy from little cherry tomatoes to plum tomatoes, they are gorgeous. But the soup is pure white in colour, but there is a way of taking all the essence from them which has then got a clarity about it. I haven't got any pink or red. It's very absolutely, it's almost like looking at um, a very pale concept.